Um, if I say programmatic media buying, how many folks here know what I mean by that or have some idea of RTB? Um, great. Looks like a lot of hands. Uh, a lot of these terms are thrown around, so for the purposes of the talk today, uh, what I'll primarily mean is modes of, of digital media buying uh, that are automated uh, and optimized in an automated way uh, versus sort of the traditional phone fax uh, I.O. manner. Um, and the thing I wanted to talk about today was, uh, as uh, Rocky alluded to, was just the, the, the nature of uh, consumer consumption of media has changed drastically. Uh, and I'd like to suggest that maybe we need to realign the way in which our mental model uh, for um, uh, sort of uh, engaging the consumer uh, works. And I want to start, uh, before we talk about the sort of current digital revolution in consumerism that's going on, roll back to sort of one of the last great revolutions in uh, consumerism, uh, which is to be sort of turn of the last century, uh, the department store. Uh, and we have here representing that a picture of Selfridges, uh, both because I think it's apt, but I also kind of identify with uh, 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 Joseph Gordon Selfridge as an American coming to London to make his way. Um, but at any rate, if you think about the department store at the turn of the century, uh, it was sort of this massive revolution of turning uh, consumerism into entertainment, right? So to that point, uh, buying stuff is a drudge. You've got to go to multiple stores, you've got to carry stuff, qualities of an unequal, you know, an uneven sort of uh, guarantee. Uh, and then you get sort of these massive palaces of consumption like Selfridges here in London, like John Wanamaker's in the US. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, like I get it. Like I, I'm going to this place, it's going to think about my experience in this place. I'm gonna to go to shop, I'm going to go at Selfridges, they have reading rooms and cafes and places to eat. And you end up buying a lot of stuff before you leave and you feel really good about it, right? So shopping as a delight. And when you think about that experience, it was extremely carefully curated, right? Uh, the, the pathway that one takes through the store is really thought out well, and this lasts through to today, right? Like every single department store you go into pretty much uh, has perfume uh, and cosmetics by the entrance and exit because it's a great impulse buy and they can make you feel really good. And it smells nice, by the way, when you're on your way to get to menswear, women's wear. Think about the world of the Tesco's and Sainsbury's and Car 4's of the world. Um, they'll spend an enormous amount of human uh, uh, sort of capital and time and effort thinking about testing what's on the end cap, what's at eye level, what's below eye level. Uh, and the reason that all this thought goes into the physical uh, consumer uh, pathway is because it has very provable ROI, right? Um, and, and there's a reason why a ton of thought goes into that still to this day. And there's a reason why that initial thought of curating the consumer experience uh, revolutionize shopping because it works basically thinking about the the consumer pathway works so this is all well and good and you may ask that's great I, I understand how that could apply to something like online shopping uh, but how does it apply exactly to marketing and uh, in my presentation here I will posit uh, that today's online consumer on connected devices uh, looks more like a shopper in Selfridges in you know 1918 uh, than the consumer looked to a media buyer buying television, radio, and print in 1960. A um, few reasons why I'd, I'd state that. One is, much like the in-store shopping experience, the exposure to brand and the action time are proximate, right? So unlike the world in which you sit on your television and you see an ad and take some action a week later, uh, the consumer today is literally always in your store or always at the point of awareness or always at the point of favorability, whether they're on the tube, whether they're on a train, whether they're walking down a uh, street, you can be making the right or wrong decision about whether their experience with your brand is going to end up correctly, right? So the stakes are very high in the same way for a physical store they're high. They are high for marketers today in a way that they weren't 50 years ago because uh, you, can, you can wait your three months for the uh, Nielsen ratings to come out. That TV ad didn't work and we'll, you know, three months from now we're going to buy up front and, and we kind of go along our merry way. So uh, the time of exposure to the time of action is compressed in the digital world. The second is that uh, data is in a much faster feedback loop, right? So again, thinking about the typical planning, buying, uh, analysis in TV. Uh, and a, for a big brand that's measuring in-store results, maybe on a lagging, you know, month to three month basis, right? Today, the, the data comes back in real time. And again, I'll point out, you can think of it as a physical store uh, sort of analogy, where a smart salesperson 
uh, will be suggesting the right tie to go with the suit that you're looking at or will be uh, you know, suggesting the shoes to go uh, with the dress that you want to buy. Um, so again, the, uh, being responsive to the consumer, uh, interacting with the consumer, picking up on their, uh, the context and the mood that they're in based on the data available is extremely important. And the third thing is that idea of unifying everything in one place lets you optimize holistically. Uh, you can think about it as a physical store. I can curate your feel as you walk through the door in terms of what you smell, what you see, where you're led to get to what you want to get to, and I can drive a lot of ROI and additional revenue out of that. The exact same thing applies online. If you treat the consumer differently in every channel you operate, if you operate in a completely ununified view of the consumer across multiple networks and treat every channel differently, um, you'll be literally having the wrong conversation with the consumer every single time uh, that you speak with them. So, once you just look here, a few general principles. The consumer's always in your store in a connected digital world across devices. Um, feedback happens in real time. That presents uh, enormous opportunity uh, for you to customize experience to them. Uh, and then the third is that optimization in an automated large way uh, is important. And as uh, Rocky kind of alluded to before, you, know, you think of this traditional linear line uh, of how consumers operate and you know just intuitively it doesn't work none of us walk around thinking awareness awareness favorability conversion like it just it's not how we think as 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 consumers um, really what this maps is this is the mental model in which the most granular mes uh, mode you have of controlling your message is the channel right this is the this is the world in which TV uh, phone book right uh, couponing this is this is that, that's a world in which very broad stroke uh, sort of passes have to be taken at, at um, uh, uh, addressing the consumer. So this really maps to uh, thinking about managing to channel, not to consumers. This, this never represented anything about consumer behavior. It's a mental model based on the channels that have existed traditionally. This is probably a lot closer to what uh, the actual consumer path uh, looks like, right? Uh, if you think about any even short cycle conversion uh, or, or consideration process that happens, uh, it spans channels, certainly, on the paid side. It certainly spans uh, 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 earned. It certainly spans owned. Um, it goes across all over the board. So obviously, the, the stakes are high here. For the first time, we can unify those experiences. Um, the issue we face as digital marketers today is that uh, the mental model we still tend to use is that linear one. So we think, oh, I'm going to use my ad server to measure this. Uh, I've got my search platform to do this. I've got a web analytics over here, but it doesn't talk to my CRM. You, you kind of still, we exist in this fragmented world. Um, and what I will throw out is that um, really the only way to get past that uh, is to um, think about things in, in terms of what I would call an operating system, right? So, um, you know, we can think about consumers have become users of devices, and in the same way, the operating system on your devices simplify for you the millions of operations that go into like editing a Word document, right? You could never actually create a Word document if you had to think about all that. In the same way, uh, the marketing operating system unifies all the digital channels, uh, simplifies the execution by automating a lot of the decision making, uh, and ultimately is the only way you can make the you know, thousands or tens of thousands of individual decisions along that sort of wending road uh, that allow you to show the right message to the right user. So a few just quick thoughts on this. Uh, up here kind of represents what would be a traditional way of thinking about digital media buying, which is I've got a spreadsheet, I've got five partners in my banner, I've got two mobile partners, I've got all these things going, zero universal frequency capping, zero message sequencing. Uh, you don't know when to stop talking, but at the very least, it's inefficient from like one person operating all that can only do so many things. If you think about, you know, in the programmatic world, the automated world, roughly access in display, video, social, mobile to something like 80 billion opportunities to touch a consumer a day globally, and that being automated across all those, just the orders of magnitude, it's a step change in how much you can personalize uh, marketing to, to talk to consumers. So just a, a, a couple quick stats here in terms of, of penetration because uh, uh, Europe specifically is sort of leading the world in adoption of this technology. UK is roughly 50% uh, of monetization of, of publisher inventory. Uh, France and Netherlands uh, a little bit higher than that. 
Uh, Germany's a little bit of a laggard, but in general, massive adoption uh, uh, here in the UK and in, and in Europe. Um, just three sort of pillars maybe to think about. Uh, the first is uh, media, and the key thing here is it's big, and what you're doing when you unify media in one place is you're allowing yourself to talk to the consumer, not to the channel. So the moment you have four teams operating against the four same objectives and four channels, you're managing to channel, not to the consumer. Um, and obviously, organizationally, this becomes a challenge at, at larger marketers, but you know, I think directionally, it's a, it's a good place to, to try to head towards. Um, optimization that, that happens in real time and is transparent. And, uh, Rocky sort of you know, talked about this a little bit, but you know, in terms of that data that comes back, um, there's traditional way of thinking of the world uh, which is needed, which says, hey, here are my four archetypes. This is Jill, she's an urban professional, she's a tech enthusiast, uh, she's passionate about uh, sports, right? And I, I need to go talk to Jill. Within that interaction that you have with Jill, Jill is different at different points in time, place, context, what's going on in her life, et cetera, and the only way to get a true valuation of how I should be talking to Jill is automated. It's, and it looks like this. It doesn't look like a picture of Jill with four bullet points, right? We already have that. We already know we want to go after this archetype. Uh, now what the technology lets us do is literally map out along that way. Hey, when I'm talking to Jill, like I should know to stress this here, do this creative there, uh, you know, totally don't target her here, et cetera. Um, and then finally, data. This this one, you know, sort of thrown around a lot, but for, for purposes here, what I what I mean about data is the power of unifying data sets into one place. So you bring knowledge of consumer to one place, uh, you bring media in one place, and you, just literally that fact from a ease of workflow is massive, but from a what you can do is massive. You can start saying, uh, I'm going to take every every targeting variable, every uh, user persona variable, every sort of context and, and mood that I can think of for my consumer, and I'm just going to holistically talk to them. So you go from having a channel-based conversation, which is uh, you know sort of the way that media is traditionally bought, to a one-on-one -on -one conversation and thinking about how do I really want to talk about the consumer, with an important colliery being um, what you start doing to unify that 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 um, profile is you're able to join the consumer across the multiple devices that they use into a true connected ID. So we think this is an absolutely key uh, point for targeting for measurement, uh, for doing all that sort of stuff. Uh, and again, as, as Rocky mentioned, especially when you start getting into trying to de-average customer touch points uh, across uh, you know, everywhere you're going with things like multi-touch attribution becomes especially important. Cool. So in this world, you know, we sort of are moving away from above the line and below the line marketing activities to an idea that we're driving business outcomes and we're talking to consumers one on one. And just to finish up on a on a case study uh, and one that we're tremendously proud of uh, being partnered with Rakuten on as a as a client and a great partner. Um, so Rakuten Japan, for those who don't know, uh, is probably the most dominant internet uh, retailer in its own market that exists in the world. You know, 90% plus penetration on market, uh, global top 10 internet retailer, uh, and, and literally know something about every single internet consumer in Japan. So massively valuable data set in, in home market. Uh, a year ago, they made a, a, a very innovative decision which said, um, we're going to embrace uh, programmatic and we're going to leverage our unique data assets and media relationships to do it, to create what's essentially just a category killer in Japan for programmatic media buying. Um, so uh, they built an entire uh, DSP or media buying platform and DMP or metrics and, and sort of measurement media uh, uh, data management platform uh, on top of our APIs. Um, and just to take a quick look at what that looks like, uh, in the first case here, what you can uh, see uh, is, and uh, there's probably only one person in the room that can read this, but uh, we did a uh, useful English translation, is uh, just category uh, uh, categorization of users. So at, at broad cut, what are consumers interested in? And that's in an aggregated place, uh, one spot, single user identity with all of these data points across them. I'll point out importantly, because we put it in one uh, operating system, uh, in this case our Terminal One, uh, our Terminal One platform, 
What you also get uh, aggregated against that is all of the media history. And we're, what sites have we seen these folks on? And what times of day do they tend to be on the internet? Down to an individual level, right? So what you get in aggregate is, hey, here, here is uh, folks that are interested in maternity gear. Here are all the, the gear they're interested in. Here's all the, the sort of typical stuff. I can, I can hit them this many times on 5 million impressions. Uh, and I've got about 600,000 unique users. Against that, there's really deep data against where, where do they tend to shop, what are the, what are the, what the content they're interested in. So once this comes in, uh, what then is possible through the, the Rakuten UI that's built on top of Terminal 1 is media execution against it. So again, leveraging the unique media uh, relationships that Rakuten has, the ability to execute media. And again, with this idea that we're in a very specific way taking things like uh, uh, Rakuten knowledge of, hey, this person's interested in pa uh, pets, and hey, they've earned up to a gold level of, of loyalty, with things like they tend to look at Yahoo Japan and Osaka, and a 300 by 250 tends to be the best uh, unit at these specific times for these specific uh, kind of content interests. And then finally, as I mentioned, on the data management side, uh, the ability to show that back to clients. So this is actually uh, a interface that is client facing uh, where clients with full transparency can see against Rakuten's deep data set, how does that profile against my persona? So again, taking the, the sort of traditional way of looking at broad cuts of consumers and th then also letting them drill down into really fine grain uh, sort of insights. Uh, and to finish out, just a quick case study, um, the uh, client was a uh, uh, pet food uh, store they had a specific uh, CPA to hit. Uh, time frame was a month. Um, you know, again, just thinking about the kind of levers that you get here uh, across not only delivery and data, uh, but things like specific targeting and above the fold and what's the premium versus long tail inventory mix and all these sort of things that you get. Uh, with the output being that um, you know outperformed other partners uh, by almost uh, two times. And as you can see from this extremely happy cat, it really worked very well. And there were lots of well-fed cats in Japan based on this um, case study. So cool. So just to finish up, a few things. Uh, uh, Technology has evolved to a point where we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, with consumers in a way that uh, really wasn't possible except in a physical uh, sort of environment. Um, the second is that the stakes are high for getting this pathway right. Um, I'll, I'll throw out there that I, I think the bounds of this are going to continue to increase uh, when you have folks like Tesco buying Sociomanic, which is a buying platform, when you have Carrefour deeply partnering with Axiom, um, you, you're starting to see the edges being pushed on where's shopper marketing and actual sort of above the line marketing going. Uh, Oracle buying a, a company like Blue Kai. Uh, clearly this is going to become embedded in, a, in a, something the CIO looks at and says, I want the point of sale data exactly connected to what I'm targeting at the edge, right? Like consumer experience is happening all the time and it's holistic and the stakes are high on it. Uh, and then just as a third point to think about, you know, the fact that uh, just by the act of unifying your media buying activity, by unifying your data assets in one place, uh, allows you to really think uh, uh, and automate the uh, uh, marketing to consumers uh, in a consumer level way versus a channel level way. And that is all I've got. I won't stand between everyone in a pint of beer any longer. Thank you.